So the other day, Kajju posted a video talking about why World of Tanks is dying in his opinion. He talks about how premium tanks are overpowered, how in 2024 Wargaming is currently selling more loot boxes than ever, the closure of the World of Tanks official forums, Wargaming employees fired, lack of non-monetization content, destruction of clan wars, personal missions, horrible map design, and worsening tank and map balance. He talks about all of these things. He also brings up statistics on how many people are playing the game currently versus how many people used to play the game. And I have to disagree with some of his opinions. I have to agree with some of his opinions. And in today's video, I'm going to be taking a more non-biased approach to is World of Tanks actually dying? Because while he did bring up a lot of very good points, he also missed a lot of very obvious things that, in my opinion, should have been talking about. I don't think World of Tanks is dying nearly as fast as people think it is. I think a lot of the player base that play the game are here to stay for the most part, and I agree more with Quickie Baby that, yes, the game has seen a decline in players, but I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. If we make our way over to the statistics that Kazju used for his video, and I did look at all the sources, you know, the sources seem pretty reliable, but um, the thing that we want to take a look at here is the active players, right? So in 2012, the active player base was 5 million, in 2013 it was 7 million, in 2014 it was 9.1 million, in 2015 it was 8.5 million, in 2016 we hit, we hit the highest peak ever of 9.7 million, if I'm not mistaken that's when the Stritzvon was added into the game. In 2017, okay, slight dip, that's understandable. Uh, whenever, obviously, there's a big update and a lot of people come into the game, it's understandable to see a dip. That's still a huge player base. Um, in uh, 2018, we have 7.2 million players. In 2019, we have 7.1 million. So still very respectable. Uh, 7 point, or just 7 million in 2020, right? So for the most part, the player base isn't really dipping all too much for three years. Even in 2021, 20, uh, the player base only went down about a couple hundred thousand. That's not a big deal. There's still six million people playing the game. But in 2022, the game goes down two million players. And now in 2023, there's only 2.5 million active players. Now, if you don't think of the circumstantial evidence and you're just like, wow, holy crap, Wargaming has just lost about 60% of their audience in, what, two years times? That's insane. I'm sorry, but there's no way any game can lose that much of their audience in just two years. That's not possible. I understand that, like, the numbers say that, but that's just not realistic at all. I do not believe that uh, the game lost 4 million active players in two years until you break into the circumstantial evidence. If we take a look at when Russia invaded Ukraine, it was February 24th, 2022. That's when the war started. And a little bit later in 2022 is when all US-based companies, Western companies, started leaving Russia. And why is this important? Well, if any of you remember, Lesta is no longer part of Wargaming. And if you don't know that, essentially, when uh, the war started, Wargaming split up. Lesta is a completely separate company, so the entire RU server for World of Tanks is no longer associated with Wargaming. They are completely their own separate entity. In fact, there are reports uh, on Russian news articles of Wargaming actually being one of the top performing gaming companies in Russia right now. So while, you know, people are saying, oh, the game's dying, that's, that's actually not the case. In Russia, right now, uh, Lesta's version of World of Tanks is doing incredibly well, and it is one of the most popular games in, uh, Russia. They're having tournaments on World of Tanks Blitz, which have million-dollar prize pool. Putin is funding the game himself. If you actually want to read up on that, you can. But essentially, the game's doing very popular in Russia. But the thing you have to remember is that the RU server was the largest server by a lot. I would say there was at least five to six times the people on RU than there were even on EU. And NA, there's probably 30 times the people on RU. And because of that, sure, the game definitely lost popularity. But you have to realize that uh, I think the major reason we're seeing a massive dip in the player base is because most of those players were on the RU server. And now that the game has split up, you lost about 60% of the audience. And that makes sense. I would easily say that 60% of the audience played on the RU servers. So 
I don't actually think the game is losing many players. I think that uh, Kaz, you should have thought about that. You know, I watched his whole video and he really didn't break into the war at all. Wargaming splitting from last night is huge. And while I understand you want to make a video that's breaking into the huge changes coming into the game, you also have to get your facts right. And saying the game is dying super fast and Wargaming is milking their audience because they're going to close the game in a year or two, that personally does not really stand correct to me. I think Wargaming is milking their audience more down to the fact that they are seeing a massive decline in revenue uh, due to the fact that the company has split up. Lesta, which is the RU branch, made a lot more money, obviously, with the increased number of players compared to NA. So because of that, we can see that in 2022, for example, the game only made $400 million. And I'm, I'm not sure exactly if that's adding in Lesta because the split was about halfway through the year. So... Wargaming obviously tried more monetization tactics probably in 2023 to make up for the loss in employees they have, the loss in management. It's somewhat understandable, honestly, I'm not going to lie. Um, so that's my reasoning to why the game's player base has dipped a lot. I don't think 4 million people just instantly quit the game in one year, when every single previous year you've only seen a loss of around 1 million, not even 1 million, like just a couple hundred thousand. So I don't, I personally just don't see that being possible whatsoever. So that brings us to some of the other points he uh, talked about. Let's watch his last, you know, little minute uh, here, little two minutes of talking, because these are two things I highly disagree with. Let's start off with the Ninja Turtles part of his video. For retaining an active and engaged player base. Wargaming has recently launched a new Battle Pass collaboration with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, introducing theme skins and other content to World of Tanks. In my opinion, a tank game should strive to somewhat keep its historical accuracy, showcasing tanks from various periods with great attention to detail. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles skins, however, are a far cry from the game's usual look. They are colorful, cartoonish, and just plain different from the realistic tank designs players are used to. And while it definitely causes a surge of nostalgia in some due to childhood memories, Many think that adding these fictional pop culture skins messes with the game's historical feel. Sure, collaborations like this can be exciting and bring something new to the table, but at the same time, Wargaming needs to find a balance, for if they stray too far from the game's historical roots, they risk losing some of the very players who helped make World of Tanks a success. Okay, so I wanted to talk about that really quickly. And um, the major reason why is because I think Wargaming actually made the right move with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Battle Pass, and I think that they need to do more things like this in the future. There are a lot of players who are older, you know, maybe in their 30s to 40s, even older. And if you're one of those people in the comments and you're going to type, oh, I hated the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Battle Pass, it's honestly proving my point. I made a video talking about the ST2 skin. Uh, for the Teenage Mutant Battle Pass and said why it's really cool. And there were a couple people that were like, well, it's not really, uh, you know, historical and it, and it takes away from the game. And I'm like, that's crazy. But games are meant for younger audiences. No video game is created for 50 plus players. It is created for people that are young. You're trying to keep your demographic young. That's the same thing for World of Tank Splits. I have a channel with 100,000 subscribers on World of Tank Splits, and I constantly talk about why I like a lot of the cool, fun camos. And the major reason why is simple, because it's a game, and games are meant to be fun. Games are not meant to be historical. If you want a historical game, go play War Thunder. And even then, guess what? War Thunder has Daki Makarus. You can literally run anime girl pillows on your tank. At the end of the day, it's a game, and Wargaming, in my opinion, is doing the right thing, bringing more younger style audiences in. The older player base of this game is why the younger player base doesn't get interested, and that's the problem, in my opinion, with World of Tanks. That's one of the major killing factors, is that there are no new young players entering the game. That's the problem. I wonder what percent of 12 to 16 year olds that are playing this game are saying gee i really want to play it and they continue playing it versus going over to fortnite versus going over to csgo or pubg that's the question you need to be asking yourself wargaming introducing fun camos that is going to attract a younger audience is smart in my opinion and sure if you don't like that it's not a historical camo, then that's great. But at the end of the day, World of Tanks has many non-historical vehicles in the game that never would have even seen the day in war. Not only that, but if you add into the fact that artillery are able to literally shoot you 
from standing still, the fact that your tanks have hit points. These are all non-historical things. World of Tanks is an arcade game. It's not a real battle simulator. I mean, it's just not. And you shouldn't expect it to be one. Um, so I, I personally think that making this game more appealing to younger audiences is a major thing that Wargaming really needs to focus on right now. And uh, I, I actually think the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle thing was good. And by the way, if you don't like the camos, you can turn on only historical aspects of the game, and then you won't run any camos, because, I mean, that's you, you have the option of doing that as well. I should point that out. So the other thing I wanted to talk about was, um, is there a way back? Kazju only talks for about literally 40 seconds about what he thinks should be done to make the game better, and uh, let's just hear. As I've previously mentioned, I love this game and grew up playing it, and as a content creator I still see so much potential in this game, but I honestly believe that we are on the 24th hour when it comes to saving the game from its ever increasing depopulation. I also feel like we need a bit of fresh air in the room, and Wargaming has to come up with something huge that will spark a massive positive response from the community. There are loads of different ideas for this, such as graphical overhaul, massive tank rebalancing, the introduction of old, reworked maps to spark some nostalgia, the introduction of very carefully balanced tier 11 and tier 12 of tanks, more tank customizations, and the list goes on. Most importantly, you as a viewer, what do you think about all that has been said? What is the biggest problem that is ruining the game for Personally, if you ask me, I think Kazji really just wanted to break into the reasons why this game is dying, because the reasons he gave to make the game better just didn't really make sense. A graphics overhaul, I mean, in my opinion, World of Tanks is already one of the nicest looking games on the market, so I don't really see a reason to overhaul the graphics when it already looks amazing, that's completely useless. Rebalancing the whole game, sure, that's understandable, but at the end of the day, if you don't know how to play World of Tanks, it doesn't matter if you rebalance the vehicles, you're still gonna do probably bad and get bullied and uh, so I, I also don't think that's really a huge reason to why the game's dying and the final thing saying you should add more camos and customization to the game again none, none of those are gonna solve the game problem honestly it's like he didn't even spend effort to talk about reasons what you could do to fix the game um, I made a video a couple weeks ago talking about the problems with world of tanks and how to fix them the first thing I talked about was the matchmaker. I said, in my opinion, the major reason why you're not seeing newer audiences enter the game is because of the matchmaking. Plus two, minus two should not be in the game. Plus one, minus one is what it should be. It's what World of Tanks Blitz did years ago, and it's much better for the game. Why are tier fives fighting tier sevens? They can't fight them. And it's the same thing like when I'm in my tier eight, Especially, like, the other day I was playing with one of my friends, he's using a stock IS-3. I'm sorry, Wargaming, but what do you expect a stock IS-3 to do when he's up against an E-100? Nothing. There's physically nothing you can do. Tier 10s are balanced to fight tier 10s. Tier 9s are balanced to fight tier 9s. Tier 8s are balanced to fight tier 8s. So why are they fighting tier 10s? It doesn't make sense. I understand if you want to do plus one, minus one, because that adds a little bit of, you know, dispersion to the game itself and, and differences in the matchmaking, but personally, I think it is incredibly stupid to have plus two, minus two, and I think when you're a new player, it is one of the major reasons why you're going to end up quitting the game is when you're in your stock tank, you're trying to learn the mechanics, and then you're fighting tanks two tiers higher than you. That's the first thing. The second reason, artillery. Artillery is cringe. It is a tank that you cannot avoid. It shoots you, and you don't even know what happens. As a new player, you're just randomly getting pegged by shells that are not only stunning you, not only making your view range, your camo, and everything worse, but they're literally just ruining the fun for everybody. Artillery players are usually the older audience, probably age 30 and up, who aren't as accurate at aiming, and uh, just want to sit there, eat a bag of chips, and press the fire button. Artillery should not be in World of Tanks, and you can disagree with that, but it is not good for the game. You should not be rewarded for camping in the back of the map. The other thing I brought up was the fact that uh, you just get flat advantages with premium account, the fact that you can choose what maps you don't want to play on with premium account activated, but you can't do that without. That's a little stupid if you ask me. The fact that you cannot play this game free. The fact that you literally do not have the ability to earn credits unless you spend money on this game. I think that's honestly another one of the major driving factors. If you play this game free to play, you don't have a premium account, you don't have anything going for you, and you know Quickie Baby says, oh, you can play the game free to play. And yeah, you can. 
but you have to be good at the game. Quickie Baby is an experienced player. If you're new and you're, you know, the average new player, 40% style, uh, you don't know what the mechanics are of the game. You don't know the proper positions and what you're doing. And it's going to take years, months of training to do that. There's no way you're going to make a profit. Once you get to tier eight and you have to start loading gold ammo to pen half the tanks you're playing and you have to spend credits to get field mods and you have to spend credits to unlock your tanks modules. And then you have to get credits to unlock the next tank. I'm sorry, but you just cannot play this game free to play. And that is, I think, the major driving factor. It's these three things I talked about. It's the fact that you can't play the game free to play. It's the fact that plus two minus two exists, making you spam more gold ammo. Oh, and another thing, gold ammo should deal less damage than standard ammo. I'm sorry, but it needs to. There's people that disagree with that. Uh, you're wrong. Gold ammo should deal less than uh, than standard ammo. That, that should just be a fact. If you have a 400 alpha gun, loading gold should deal 360, 350. It's not fair that you get rewarded for loading gold when somebody else who doesn't have the credits to load gold doesn't get that same advantage. I feel bad whenever I play on my press account because I load a lot of gold shells and I shoot a lot of gold, but at the end of the day, everybody else shoots gold. So I don't know. I really, it's kind of stuck in the standstill. I want to fire standard ammo, but every tank is balanced around gold because everybody spams gold and Wargaming makes money off of it. It's just really bad for the game. And that's another major issue uh, that, that is currently going on. Sure, loot boxes are a problem, but I don't really think they're that big of a deal. Sure, map balance kind of sucks, but map design doesn't matter when the average player doesn't even know where they're going half the time. Uh, Destruction of Clan Wars, again, that doesn't really matter. That's a very small percentage of the community that's playing. Uh, personally, I think the major problems with World of Tanks are the ones I listed. I also think equipment field modifications are a little stupid because you only get them when your tank is fully equipped. Again, you're giving players that are experienced an advantage over players that aren't experienced. And these are all things you're giving people that spend money advantages over people that don't. And uh, these are reasons why the game is not growing in size. If Wargaming wants to help this game grow in size, they need to rebalance premium rounds, they need to rebalance the matchmaker so it's plus one, minus one, and they need to make it so you can earn more credits in your tech tree tanks. That is what they need to do. If they did those three simple things I've listed right there, sure, their profits might take a little bit of a dip because they're not going to be getting as much gold rounds, but I guarantee the game will be seeing a rise in player base. The reason why Wargaming isn't doing that is because they are making so much money. As we can see in the latest year of 2023, Wargaming had a revenue of 1.1 billion. That is double the next highest they've made in any other year. Actually, triple. So why? It's very simple, because they are making a lot of money. They don't care. I wouldn't either. Wargaming knows that they can just put a couple crate tanks into the game every year. They know that they can leave the game the way it is, and sure, they're not going to grow in players, but they're still going to make a bajillion dollars, and until they see a loss in revenue, they're probably going to keep doing this. Sure, is it a bad approach? Yeah, I completely disagree with it, but I don't see World of Tanks dying anytime soon. I guarantee this game will be up for at least the next four to five years, and you know what? If it does die, then oh well. It doesn't really matter, and it doesn't affect my chance because uh, at the end of the day, there's nothing I can do about it. So, um, and I won't really have a channel to post World of Tanks content on anyway. I don't know what else to say. I mean, it's disappointing, obviously, at the end of the day to talk about the game and its current state. I do agree with Kazju that the game is in a pretty dooky state right now. The balance is bad. I think vehicles like the Minnow should not have ever been introduced into the game the way they are. They have almost no weak spots. Uh, you know, the Super Conqueror, even after the nerf, is still cringe to fight. There are vehicles like the Chieftain FE-201, which need to be nerfed, need to have a bigger hatch. All Wargaming would have to do is give the FE-201 a hatch. Right now, its hatch is way too small and impossible to deal with. If they just made it a little bigger, kind of like the Chieftain uh, Mark VI, it would be fine. That's all they'd have to do. Leave the gun good, but... I don't know. Those are my opinions. I think a lot of the, the, you know, like balancing certain tanks, those are little niche things that aren't a big problem. The big problem right now is Wargaming is not fixing the, the things that are taking younger audiences away. Wargaming needs to have younger audiences come into the game. They need older audiences to slowly fade away. That's how every game works. It's, it's pretty simple. You know, if you're playing a game for 10 years, that's a very rare portion of the player base. Usually what happens is a player comes into the game, plays it for a month, probably doesn't like the way it plays, leaves, finds another game. That's how every game works. That's how I've played a lot of my games. I've played Lethal Company, I have 200 hours in Lethal Company, but guess what? I don't play it anymore because there's nothing new for me to do. And that's the same thing for probably a lot of people in World of Tanks. They get to tier 5 to tier 6, they realize, wow, I'm not having fun, I'm constantly dying, and then they leave, and that's it. Then they lose that player. So that's my opinion, that's how it is. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.